Hey guys, I'm Aaron. Today we're going to talk about how to use line styles inside of SketchUp. So line styles or dashes as they're actually called in the user interface allow you to replace the normally just constant solid line with different line types. So you can go in there and put in a dotted line or a dashed line or a dot dash line or a dash dash dot line or a dash dot dot line. You got it. There's several options in there. The point is you can change what's normally a solid line everywhere on your entities into other line types. And uh, of course, the question always comes up when, why, who would want to do something like that? And that's what this video aims to answer. Let's hop in and check it out. All right. So the UI I was talking about is right over here. If I go into tags, uh, you guys probably seen this if you've been in SketchUp at all. Over here on the right side is this dashes section. So over here, what we have is just basically each tag or uh, each, each tag, not the tag folders, but the tag has a color and then also a type, a, a dash type. Um, well, maybe we'll do another one. Let me know if you guys want to talk about these colors and we'll talk about what those are also in another video. And right now we're going to talk about these dashes. So what this is saying is anything that is connected to this tag will get this line type. So in this case, almost everything, if we look through here, everything's set to default, um, which is just a solid line. But I do have a couple that I just created. I just created some empty tags and then changed their default to different types of dashes. So you can see here, here's our default, which is normally this, this solid line. But then we have these other different dash lengths, dots, dots, dashes, uh, Morse code, and uh, other multi dash lines. You can see we can change to any of those and say when anything's on that tag, draw it with that tag type or that, that line type. So in this example, I just came in here and I just drew a little, uh, kind of a path, maybe it's a pathway to get from one location out. Something you'd see on like a, maybe a, a fire exit drawing or something like that. Here's the quickest way to get to the front door so kind of situation. Uh, maybe it's something I was just drawing in here to just see where the flow of traffic would be to the front door, that sort of thing. Where am I gonna have bottlenecks? Might be something I could break down. Regardless of why, I have an edge on here that I have that I want to stick out differently, right? Because this it's the same color and same type as all the edges that make up geometry, but this is not actually geometry, right? This is not going to be in the model anywhere. So to set it apart, I might consider making it a dashed line. And I can do that by grabbing the group. So I did, if I double click in here, I have just one line that's all welded together with a circle at one end, a little triangle at the other end. I just grabbed that whole thing, threw it into a group, and now I can take that group, go to Entity Info, and move it from untagged to, in this case, let's go to this Pathway tag. Let's scroll down until I hit P, Pathway, there we go. You can see immediately it turned into a dashed line. So when I do that, now I have a differentiator between the edges that make up the model and the edges that show this line right here. Now, this, this comes into this brings up the question of basically fundamentally how are you using SketchUp? So generally speaking, SketchUp is leveraged as the 3D modeling software. This is the thing that creates the 3D models that you work with to get output or to export or whatever you do. So it's kind of the front end, it's the creation. Um, with something like this, we're starting to get into more documentation, which is something that generally speaking, I personally would take to layout. I wouldn't do this kind of work showing these sorts of paths and stuff in SketchUp, but there are situations where that makes sense. Maybe I'm passing a note, a secret note, through SketchUp to another modeler I'm working with, or want to make sure that the, this is like an annotation kind of thing. Uh, you know, I have a question about the egress from here. Is, am I going through too many doorways as I try to leave this one space? that sort of thing, I might put something like this in here and change it to dash pathway just to call it out and make it look differently. Now, this is not wonderful because this this the default edge material on this uh, is this kind of grayish color and that kind of blends into the floor, it doesn't show up real well, but I just want to give you an example. I made another scene here, I'm gonna to click to scene two, 
where I came out and I added some additional uh, edges on here. Again, I grabbed these edges, I drew some rectangles, rounded off the corners, and then I put these into a group and I assigned that group, as you can see right here, to this outline tag. Outline has this dot dash uh, edge pattern. These ones I actually colored into different colors just to kind of have them show up better. Um, this done simple enough, if I go to my styles uh, right here, color by material rather than all the same. And then by doing that, I can actually apply colors to the edges. Again, what we're looking at here now is kind of documentation inside the model. I personally wouldn't do much of this unless it was something situation where, okay, I need to just, I just need to mock this up real quick and, and, you know, for whatever reason, I want to call out the grand space versus just the gym or something like that. This is maybe a temporarily mock-up kind of situation. That would be something I would show inside of SketchUp. Generally speaking though, if I was to do this kind of output and I wanted this on a plan where I actually want this, I would add these lines, these edges uh, would all go in inside of layout over the top instead. But if you do need this temporary marking, generally that's why I would refer to, you know, when we talk about things, we do have tools in here like dimensions or text or, or some of those kind of things, which are good to put that, those callouts on here. But again, they're kind of model callouts, right? So it's, oh, there's a, a fault in the dimensions and I'm gonna call out where that is with a text string or something like that. So that way when I pass the model back and forth, whoever's working on it knows that here's where I found the problem in the, in the dimensions that were on the plan, that sort of thing. Whereas final actual documentation, so the final dimension strings, uh, the text on on the, the printout, that sort of stuff is all added in layout. Now, as I say that, of course, there are exceptions to that rule. Um, there are certain situations where you may actually have pieces of the model that you want to show up dashed. So uh, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to go look at another model. So I have this second model open right here. All right, so this is a incredibly simplified uh, building model. So I have these uh, set of walls. These walls are sitting on foundation walls right here. They're flush to the outside. And then of course I have some footers that those are sitting on top of as well. Now, if I was to take this and send it to layout, so say I was to go to camera, we'll go to a top view, and then we'll go to a parallel projection. This might be what I send to layout. Uh, maybe I might even do this. I might get I might get boring with it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this for documentation purpose. I might send that to layout. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but I'd probably want to come into layout and do some hatching or something so I could differentiate what's a wall versus what's the footer wall versus what's the, you know, the, the foundation wall. I, I can't really tell here. I just have this kind of offset of edges. Now, what I can do, um, Let's let's add this as a scene so I can jump back to this later. I might say plus, break that as a scene. There we go. That way I can animate out of there and then still come back. All right, so what I could do is I could take these and I could actually add different tags for these. So as luck would have it, I have tags already created. I'd like to not spend time typing and you know mistyping things in videos. You guys know how that all works. So. Uh, if I have to type, I try to do it off camera. But anyhow, what I could do here is I could come in and I could say, okay, this is framed walls. So I'm going to put that on a layer called frame walls. Down here, my foundation walls are going to be on a separate tag called foundation walls. And then finally, my footers down here be on a third tag. Now what I can do is I can say, okay, foundation walls, those are going to be this tight dash. And you can see as soon as I click it, the lines show up that way. And then footers are going to be this wider dash. And then I can see that right there. So now if I go to my scene and I look down, I can pretty easily tell based on maybe if I put a key on here or something that this bigger dash is my footer, this tighter dash is my concrete wall, and then my solid wall, my solid edges are my actual framed wall. So I could take that export directly layout and just 
have all those edges show up because they're attributed to the actual tags themselves. If I didn't do that and wanted to change those line types later, I'd have to actually go through the process of manually replacing edges and drawing overs, that kind of thing. So uh, this is a much quicker way to get that out there and a great way to use tags. In fact, if you set your template up ahead of time, you could actually have these tags already in there with their line types. And then as each piece is added to the proper tag, they would just automatically show up with those edges. So there you go, that's, that's two specific cases that I could think of where those dashes would come in useful. So the first one, again, like I was saying, is on-screen documentation. So something that I don't want to necessarily just wait till output and layout to do. I want to call out a section of the building or frame something up. I might do that with dashes. The other thing, of course, is exporting uh, layered edges. So when, when I have multiple things on top of each other, I want to call them apart. Uh, that might be another spot where you could put those those dashes on there. Uh, either way, dashes are in there. It's part of it. It's part of tags. You do have to properly group things and assign those groups to tags. Notice I didn't do that with raw geometry. I drew the things I needed. I grouped them and then applied the group to the tags. That's how you should go about it. That is how uh, it is meant to be used. But um, I would love to hear from you. Is there a way that you use dashes? You use those line types inside of your SketchUp models that I didn't touch on? Tell me about it down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys, finding out different ways to do stuff. Uh, if you, if I get enough feedback, you guys tell me another ways. We'll, we'll do another video like this. We'll do a more dashes. Okay, we'll come up with a better name before then, but you know, we'll go beyond this. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment down below. Uh, like I said, tell us about how you use dashes, or if you've never known about dashes, let us know that too. If you know dashes but didn't know how to use them, you're going to try this. Love to hear that. Or if you have an idea that you think would make a wonderful video, that's something we haven't touched on before, tell us about that. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.